I'm going to talk about this area of work on women's economic leadership in agricultural markets, which is a, a, a major component of our overall work on women's livelihoods. Um, as many of you know, we have uh, this year launched a new AIM-1 strategy called Economic Justice, Susa Sustainable Livelihoods Now and Into the Future. And um, one of the four key work streams in this is women's livelihoods, resilience and leadership. So that's a strategic priority. And we are also working to promote gender justice across all of our livelihoods work. So clearly it's very important organizational um, priority and priority in particular for, for AIM-1. Um, the work that I'm going to talk about though is, is built, has been built over the last two years and before that um, obviously earlier, earlier work, but especially over the last two years by a lot of collaboration across the livelihoods team and also with regional advisors and country teams as you will see. Um, just um, to remind us all, these, these are, are mostly kind of familiar um, uh, facts or arguments um, for all of us, but just to remind us the context that we are addressing, which is that in the agricultural sector, women, and particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, women produce um, a very high proportion of the, the food um, in terms of the amount of labor they contribute but there are a whole range of barriers, which are barriers both to the, with the women gaining a decent livelihood and developing their farms. So those barriers include the fact that often the labor that women contribute is unpaid, either because it's family labor uh, or it's very poorly paid casual agricultural work. Um, women, as we know, have very much less control over land and other key assets. So that limits the, the, the extent to which they can expand and develop their production as well as the security of their livelihoods. Um, women spend uh, many hours, often up to three hours a day in things like fuel wood collection, water collection, um, cooking and inhaling um, uh, fumes from um, wood stoves is actually a major cause of, of morbidity and death among rural women. Um, and also we know that women tend to have less say, both at household level but also at other levels, on how agricultural resources are invested and how the incomes from um, agricultural markets are used. So, um, for example, in countries like Uganda, you know, that we find that um, something like 60% you know, of women are engaged in, in agricultural crop production, but when it comes to the number of women who are actually selling those crops, the number starts to go down to sort of 30 or 20 percent and so women may be doing a lot of the labor in the production but don't get the direct access to the income. Our own experience but also rigorous research that already exists, um, much of it done by uh, economists, which actually tries to, to demonstrate how in fact if the existing agricultural resources were allocated more equitably um, that not only would women <laughs> benefit, but actually there could be improvements in agricultural productivity and efficiency. Um, so this is, is not just about, or not only about, um, promoting gender equality and, and women's empowerment. It's also about the wider development challenge and how promoting gender equality is essential to overall agricultural development. Particularly in um, Sub-Saharan Africa, there's a lot of evidence that if, for example, we moved the allocation of uh, land and fertilizers from uh, uh, men to women, or if women had the same access to land and fertilizers as men, the productivity would increase significantly. So it's important that we understand this work in this way. It's not just about, um, or not only about promoting gender equality, but also about our wider challenge around food, food justice and agricultural development. However, um, I mean, I've sort of painted the big picture, but in terms of what development actors, including ourselves, have been doing historically, um, this is a kind of caricature, if you like, of, you know, we've tended to have kind of rural women's projects and then, you know, more recently, Oxfam and, and other um, agencies as well have really begun to develop quite fast into agricultural market and enterprise development programs. But 
on the Rural Women's Projects, we, we've tended to be very sort of micro-focused, only look at where women already are, and only improving the sort of marginally the existing production system. Because we're only looking at where women are, that tends to trap women in um, low value or low growth areas. And often when we look at organizing women, there tends to be a very sort of social focus. We try and deal with everything to do with the sort of gender and it's all, all the different social challenges and issues. Um, and don't think about how can women's organizations or organizations that women are involved in be economically viable and sustainable. And similarly, you know, the, there's tended to be a um, somewhat of a blind spot um, in terms of agricultural markets and enterprise programs tending to focus more on business viability, not think systematically about um, gender in markets, and also to rely on models of organizing that we know tend to exclude or marginalize women. Formal agricultural cooperatives don't have a good track record in involving women and, and empowering them, for example. So what has our response been? Um, over the last couple of years, as I mentioned, we've really started to do a lot more collaborative work across that divide, if you like, across the divide of the, the rural women and the um, business, business and markets focus and work much more in a multidisciplinary way and recognize that we need more time and resources to really analyze up front the ways in which market systems um, work differently for men and women. As a result of doing that, um, upfront analysis across a wide range of programs, we've been able to systematize tools and methods which ensure that going forward we can really keep this focus on promoting women's economic leadership in all stages of program design. And so really all of this is about how do we have a new approach which is designing agricultural markets and enterprise programs that really work for women. So what, what is our, our vision around this? It's that if we can increase the visibility of poor women within agricultural markets, promote them into new roles and leadership positions, new roles in the market, leadership positions in organizations, in markets that are viable and sustainable and growing, we believe not only can we increase women's incomes and their wider well-being, but we can also facilitate wider economic and social empowerment for women. So th there's a... There's a a uh, different, if you like, entry point to thinking about how we do our um, promoting of women's rights within livelihoods, which is that we think about the market as being a catalyst for this wider process of change. Just a couple of um, e examples of that. When um, uh, our m and &E team were recently analysing one of our projects in Ethiopia, looking at the, the, the baseline data there was found to be a clear association between women who had more assets and their ability to influence decisions in the household. Yeah? Our programs in places like Haiti and India have found that where women have taken on more visible roles in organic cotton production in India, in dairy in Haiti, interviewing households who've been involved in that, that has reflected in the influence that women have been able to have in household decision making and in tackling issues like violence against women. So rather than starting at the household level and trying to address all those barriers from there, it's looking at how economically empowering women can have or facilitate some of these wider impacts. 